all right what's up everybody welcome back to structure free learning and in this video we're going to cover flexural behavior of steel beams the objective of this video is to describe the strain and stress behavior of steel beams we're going to talk from elastic behavior to fully plastic and by the time this video is over hopefully you will be able to explain the difference and how to calculate the yield moment and the plastic moment of a steel section. All right, to get us started, we're gonna look at loaded steel beam. All right, so I got this beam. We'll say it's like an I-shaped beam or a Y-flange section, and it's loaded at mid-span with the force P and has a length L, and the cross section is a wide flange shape, meaning it looks like an I. Now, the first stage of behavior that we're going to look at is essentially elastic section behavior. And this is everything you would have learned in like mechanics of materials or strength of materials, where you said that this cross section remained in the linear elastic region of the stress strain curve. We have this cross section here, this I shaped section. There's a moment that's applied to it, this M applied, which we would get from a moment diagram with this loading and it's at mid-span. It might be an equation that you know, like PL over four. But in any case, what it does is it causes bending where the top is in compression and the bottom of the cross section is experiencing tension. When the section is linear or the materials are remaining linear elastic, uh, for this symmetrical cross section, the neutral axis is in the middle or the geometric centroid. So bam, like that. Is that the middle? That's middle-ish. And we know that the strain varies linearly from mechanics of materials where we have compression at the top and tension at the bottom. And because the materials are linear elastic and all of this is just steel, and if everything is linear, that means the strain and compression is less than the yield strain and the strain and tension is less than the yield strain. In fact, if I were to look at a stress strain curve of steel, this is definitely not to scale, but it would look like this right here. And this value right here would be that yield stress and this right here would be the yield strain like that. And what we're saying is that all the materials are linear elastic, the strains are less than the yield strain, and in that linear elastic region, because of Hooke's law, we know that the stresses are also less than the yield stress. And I can draw a stress profile for the normal stress on the cross section due to bending. We'll call that the compressive stress at the top and then tensile stress at the bottom. And that means these normal stresses have not yielded. So they are also less than the yield stress, capital F, Y. And in mechanics and materials, you learned some, you know, you learned a really popular equation, the bending formula, F equals M Y over I. This Y value is measured from this location here, this Y value like this, positive upwards. You might have seen a negative sign here. We're going to just deal with let's say we'll deal with absolute values. So we'll say that we're looking at absolute stresses and know which side is in compression, which side is in tension. And if the distance from the neutral axis to the top in compression, we'll call this distance right here, we'll call this Y compression. And because my cross section is symmetrical, those distance Y compression, and Y tension, the distance down this way, Y tension are also equal. So in this case, because the cross section is symmetric, we're gonna call that just some C. It's like the furthest distance from the neutral axis. And so I know that F, the compressive stress, is equal to MC over I at the top, and the tensile stress is also MC over I. And like you're probably learning in steel design that, hey, you know, like we have axes to the cross section. So if you look in like different, like if you look at part one of the AISC manual, you'll see like bending or some axis associated with the cross section. This horizontal axis here is XX. 
So we would call this bending about the x-axis because that applied moment is about the x-axis. And that's essentially it. And one of the properties that we want to be aware of is, in particular, this property right here. This, which occurs in both cases, this thing that I'm circling in purple, this is called an elastic section modulus, this S sub X. Our C is the furthest distance from the neutral axis to the outermost layer or edge of the section. And all this behavior here, any short, any time we're in the linear elastic region, you know, we're using equations from mechanics and materials and strength of materials. All right, so we understand linear elastic behavior. Now, as we increase the loading on the steel beam and the applied moment increases, and what happens at the top and bottom, the compressive strain reaches the yield strain of the steel, and the tensile strain also reaches the yield strain because we have a symmetric cross-section. And that means those values are right here on the stress-strain curve. And by Hooke's law, or just from the stress-strain curve, we know that the compressive stress at the top is the yield strength of steel, and the tensile stress at the bottom is also the yield strength of steel. And the moment that's associated with the strain and stress profile is what we call the yield moment. And because it's right at the edge of the linear elastic region, we can still use the equations from, from mechanics of materials, which is essentially the flexor formula. So here in this scenario, the yield stress is equal to the moment applied in this case you know this yield stress is at the top or the bottom so this is going to be mc over ix we would solve for the moment associated with this this my is equal to fy and we could also just write this as fy sx and so this yield moment is fy times sx and now again as i keep increasing the load beyond the yield moment more of my cross-section yields so that my strain profile might look like this. The strain profile is still linear, but that strain and compression here is greater than the yield strain, and the strain and tension down here is also greater than the yield strain. Somewhere around here, the cross-section experiences yield. So this point might be the yield strain values here like this. And so what we have is we have a portion of the cross section that's still linear elastic. So all the layers here associated with these strain values and here, that part of the cross section would be linear elastic. And so it, we might say like all the way here, this portion of the steel cross-section is linear elastic. And in my stress-strain profile, that green zone is basically in this region right here. This is, you know, anytime the strain is less than epsilon y. Everywhere above or below that yield point, we have here these lines, these purple lines, are greater than the yield strain of the steel. And so here, everything here this portion that I'm shading in purple is plastic, or it's in the plastic zone of the stress-strain curve. So that means we are in this region right here. This is that plastic zone here, like this. Yes, okay. And that's what we mean by this cross-section is partially plastic. And in terms of stress, because we're in this plastic zone here, the stress is still the yield stress. So I would have a uniform stress block up to that yield strain value. And this stress or this compressive stress in this region, this magnitude is the yield stress of the steel. Then this compressive stress would vary linearly, just like the stress strain curve, like this. This would be my stress profile for this partially plastic section here. And then I'd have a similar stress profile for in the tension zone. And this tensile stress down here would also be the yield stress of the steel like that.
And this is what my partially plastic stra strain and stress profile look like. Now, it'd be great if we could use the flexure formula to calculate the applied moment, but because the strain and stress profile is no longer linear elastic, all of our equations that we learned for linear elastic mechanics and materials no longer apply. And the way we would determine a moment is by section equilibrium. And when I say section equilibrium, that just means, you know, some of the equations in the horizontal, uh, some of the moments about a point, usually those are all that we're going to use. So now, as I keep increasing the load here, seems like I get every single point of my cross section is beyond the yield strain. And what that means is, as soon as I move a little bit away from the neutral axis, I'm beyond the yield strain, and my strain profile might look something like this. I'll try to exaggerate the strain values here, and boom, maybe like this. This number would be way beyond the yield strain, and same with the tensile strain here, this number. And, if, and as soon as I leave the neutral axis, like these points here, that would be maybe the yield strain there, like this, okay? Like the entire cross section has yielded. And so the entire cross section is in this zone, in the plastic zone. The strains are all in the plastic zone. So every layer is, if you will, purple. Okay, like that. Boom. Yes. Right here. And the whole cross section is yielded. Yes. And that would be fully plastic. You might even hear the term a plastic hinge for the way that this fully plastic section would respond. It kind of acts like a hinge. But every single point here is yielded. So that means in terms of the stress profile, every single point has the same stress. So we have like this rectangular stress block that with an intensity of Fy. And I would have a very similar stress profile for the tension side. And the moment that's associated with this strain and stress profile, we're going to call the plastic moment. And we're going to determine the plastic moment by section equilibrium. We do that by looking at the stress profile here. If I look at the stress profile, all right, so to get the plastic moment, I know from my understanding of this plastic hinge formation or this plastic, fully plastic section, everything above is in compression and everything below some neutral axis is in tension. Now, because the cross section is not elastic, what we have is a different neutral axis. This would be called the plastic neutral axis. It can be different than the elastic neutral axis, and it's not necessarily at the centroid. Only when the cross-section is symmetrical is it at its centroid. Really, the way that we would find or identify the location of this plastic neutral axis is understanding that it divides the tension and compression into equal areas. Basically, the compression area is equal to the tension area, which is the gross area of the section divided by two. And we'll prove that from equilibrium. So in order to get MP, what we're going to do is we're going to apply section equilibrium. If I take the stress applied over the compression area, that is going to result in a compression force resultant. And tensile stress over the tension area will result in a tension force resultant like this. And this is our moment couple. And if I take some of the moment about the plastic neutral axis or this point right there, and I say anything going counterclockwise is positive, well, all I have to do is some moment. This tension force is located at the centroid of the tension area. So I'm called that YT. This tensile force is probably acting like right there. And then this compression force similarly is in the centroid of the compression area, which is like right here. By equilibrium, if I do force times distance, so I would have uh, let's see, I have the tension force times yt plus the compression force times yc minus mp equals zero. And I would find that mp is equal to, I can also apply some of the forces in the horizontal. 
And this would just tell me that the tension force minus the compression force equals zero, which really just tells me that tension equals compression. Hey, 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 hey. From our understanding of stress, maybe you've seen this. Sigma is force divided by area. So force is equal to stress times area here. So in, in terms of steel, this tensile force would be the tensile stress, which is Fy, the yield strength of steel, times the area in tension. So that's going to give me my tension force. And this is equal to the yield stress or the stress in compression times the area in compression like this. I have this definition as well. I know that my stresses are the same. And what this proves is that my tension area is equal to my compression area which kind of proves that the plastic neutral axis divides tension and compression, which means for a given cross-section, this would be wherever the gross area of the section is divided by two or cut in half. Yay! I know that C equals T and it also equals Fy, times a g over two so i know this relationship and if i call this one and i call this two and i substitute two into one then i'm gonna get that mp is and really if i put this in the same form recall the yield moment was this f y times s x if i put it in the same form this mp this plastic moment would be f y times and we call this portion here, we call this the plastic section modulus. We use the symbol Z. And since this is bending about the X axis, we would call this. And in fact, I might call this MPX. MPX would be FY times ZX. And this would be our plastic moment for this section. Yes. And V, this right here. So look at what we did was we talked about beam behavior. We took a beam as if it were loaded. The load is small. Nothing is yielding. Everything is linear elastic. Just apply strength of materials to analyze the section. Then I reach a, a yielding point. Top and bottom starts to yield. And I have a moment that I can calculate using that bending formula. Now we're interested in beyond yield. We want to use more of the material. So we're looking at elastic section behavior, more of that cross section yielding. These elastic equations that we learn no longer applies. And in order to calculate moments and analyze, we apply section equilibrium. And in steel design, what's important is can we design a beam so that it reaches a fully plastic cross section? We're maximizing all the material that's available analyzed by section equilibrium some of the moments some of the forces to prove the location of the plastic neutral axis and then calculate this plastic moment and understand some new properties like the plastic section modulus hopefully that was helpful What's up next is understanding how to calculate these section properties, in particular, you know, SX, ZX, those things, in order for us to get those, we also have to understand, you know, these are built on centroid calculations and moments of inertia. So we have to make sure that we understand how to do those too. And so we got some examples of those coming up. Take it easy. Start to